I'm Andy from Steinberg, UK, and we're here at BBM, and I've got uh, some new uh, controllers here that I've been playing around with. Actually, we've launched them this weekend, so if you want to check them out. Now, they're modular controllers, which means we don't tell you what you need. So basically, you can look at it and say, oh, maybe I'd like the AI knob or maybe the transport control, but basically, you can mix and match. So six individual ones, and you can see over here, I've got two fader ports together. Now, you can actually link up to four of these fader ports, so you can actually have 16 channels there. And of course, you move around and just mix. And they also double up as LED lights, so you can see. You can see now I've got the volume represented there. So that's quite neat there. Um, if I want, I can flick through my banks quite easily, so it doesn't matter if you're working with a lot of tracks. But let's start over here on the right-hand side. Now, the idea of the AI knob is advanced integration. So it means whatever I point my um, mouse at, it's going to edit. So for instance, if I open up this window here, and I just want to change a little bit of attack on my hypnotic dance track, I just simply point and shoot, so it's that easy. If I want to move it away and say maybe automate something, I just click on the lock button, and you can see it's still editing the attack um, feature there. But even down to things like when I first go into Cubase, I don't need to touch my mouse. I can just use this knob right here to go and find my old recordings or go through a set of preset uh, templates that we have there to make life easier for you when you first start. If I want, I can just exit straight out of that. Also doubles up as a jog wheel. Let me just close that. And of course, we've got a volume knob here. But there's also four function buttons. There's four function buttons on this, eight on this, eight on this, and eight on this. And you just use the shift knob to access different ones. But I can now go into Cubase, because basically, you know, Cubase and Uendo are brothers. Everything in Cubase is assignable. So we can just go in and find the actual unit that we want, Cubase AI. We can set that to any type of category, and then you can see how many different commands there are on each category. So I work with samples a lot. So I've got that set to my media base, so if I want to open that up. Also tempos. We want to speed stuff up, slow stuff down. It's quite easy. And then, of course, I've got add track, and here I've got my mixer. So very easy to make your way around it. The next one, the CH, a channel controller. So this basically makes life easy for us on the channel. It represents exactly a Cubase channel. So at the moment, I'm working with our Hellion Sonic SE, which comes in Cubase. So I just click on that button instantly, I can open up my, um, my window there and start editing. Of course, point and shoot again. I want to close it, I just do that. If I want to say work with EQ, I can just click on that button and I normally have my EQs turned on, but I can move across to my quick control here and instantly just start editing, editing my EQ very easily. Let's say you're doing a mix and you're working with vocals. And the thing is, we tend to start adding a lot of stuff to our mix sometimes. So maybe we want to just go back and AB it and go back to the original one. So we can instantly just bypass our inserts, the EQs and the sends. So great for the mix down. A couple of other things. That's obviously our track inspector. Read, write, so we've got our automation functions there. Once again, so if I wanted to maybe drag this out and I want to loop the track that I've got there, I just highlight it and you can see I've got a quick command there just to set up fill loop uh, with the locator. So that all makes a lot of sense. You've got a pan function, you've got this uh, volume ribbon control here so you can very easily edit the, the, the actual channel. But a couple of really interesting things. If I want to work with my automation straight away, I can just click on the folder here and instantly it brings up my automation in Cubase. This freeze function is something that scan customers don't use or don't need to use because their computers are so fast. But let's say you've got an older computer. You need to go and see scan, by the way, if you've got an older computer. But um, we've got this freeze function here. So let's say our computer's running a bit low on juice and we're hearing a few cracks and pops. And these days, um, technology is developing so fast that basically you need a lot of RAM or you need a decent amount of RAM to work with you know, the high quality samples that we've got. But this freeze guy here, if I click on this, you see on the screen there, it now comes up with a freeze channel option. If I hit OK, it's now rendering this track and all the effects and all the inserts and EQs directly to audio, which takes up way less processing power than it would if we were to say have to actually uh, work with the instrument itself. If I want to unfreeze it, I just simply click on it, hit unfreeze. So when I first saw that button, I was thinking, oh, I wonder why they've got that in there. But if you're using a laptop like me, it makes life so much easier on the road. Okay, moving across to our quick controls. Quick controls is something that Cubase has had for some time, but basically it means we can assign anything in Cubase to this unit right here. So if I want to go into something like Loop Mash, I'm just going to click on this guy, say Synth Loop Mash, open it up. I'm going to click on this guy right here. We'll go into the media bay, we'll find something. So now I've got a whole lot of samples loading in here. So you can hear that playing around. 
Now, if I was to use this live, the only thing I've got at the moment to edit these similarity sliders is my mouse. So that's, you know, it's a little bit tedious, really. So what I'm going to do is quickly click on the in-out learn, go to quick controls, aim my mouse at the first one, bang, 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 bang. So instantly now, I can start working with it. So fast. And that will go to any VSC instrument. So, you know, guys might use third-party VSC instruments and get frustrated because they might want to have control over the attack or the drive or the resonance cutoff, any of that kind of stuff. Now you can see it's so easy just to hit learn, point, shoot, and that's taken me less than a second really to set up. And I think I showed you before on a different track. Close this, go back to Hellion Sonic SC. I want to work with EQ. Once again, I just go back into my EQ knob and I can sort it out. The other thing is we've got shift buttons. So shift, you can see, is turning all of my EQs on and off very quickly. So I just load up my EQ, bang, turn them on, and away I go. Start working with it. So the rest of that kind of makes sense. You've got, again, another read-write function here, channel select. So we can uh, flick through the channels. Over to this guy, the transport control. Now, the transport control, it's quite easy to explain. It's the, place, it's the one that gets you places in Cubase. So it makes it easy for us to find our way to any point in our song uh, almost instantly. So, for instance, if I'm working with this track here, I might want to set, I might want to work with the first four bars. So I've got my left locator there. I'm just going to click right here, instantly hold down shift, set my right locator, and now I can go into cycle mode, and that will just loop over and over and over again. If I want to go to the left locator, I just click on left. If I want to go to the end of my locator, I just click on right. So that all makes sense. This will add markers. So if we want to have a marker for our verse, a marker for our chorus, we can do that very easily. If I just want to work with this one section of track right here, I just highlight it, click on this button, you can see instantly my locators have set to left and right there. So you can see it's very easy to find our way around in Cubase. But probably my favorite feature on this is the ribbon control. And this is one of the coolest things about all of the different um, uh, CMC units. At the moment, I'm working with this track. I'm not so sure on the tempo. So I'm just going to hold down shift and select tap tempo. So maybe I want to at that speed. I want to slow it down. And this is possible now due to the amazing uh, time stretching and pitch shifting algorithm in Cubase. So if we want to slow it all the way down. Or if we want to go a bit crazy. Now that is ridiculously crazy because that's 280 beats per minute. I don't think any amount of drugs will allow you to dance to that, that uh, tempo. But there's another few things. So we've got zoom. You can zoom in and out very easily. If we want to use a locator, you can see I can move that around. Even if I want to use it as a jog, you can see I can strop through there. So really handy. So that gets us places, which brings us to this guy. Now, all weekend people have been raving about these units, but of course, this guy is general MIDI protocol. So you can hook this up to anything, as you can with all of them if you, you know, if you know how to do mapping and that sort of stuff. But this is the guy, of course, all the DJs are raving about. It's small, you Ladies can see. Ladies and gentlemen, the one o'clock oh. start will be starting in 15 minutes time. 15 minutes time. You can see they all link together, so I can just click it in there. But you can take that to a gig, plug it into your laptop, start, you know, as, you could use that, uh, you know, with your arranger track in Cubase, or of course just to, you know, play drums. A few different curve setups, so if we want to have, you know, different curves for our uh, different sounds, it's possible to do it that way. You've got our velocity mode, so if we want different types of velocities for different instruments, that's easy. And then also in Cubase, oh sorry, not, not necessarily in Cubase, but it comes with this uh, controller. So we can actually use this controller to edit it and map it to whatever we want. So you can see the four velocities there, we can change it to whatever we want. And then we've got the velocity curves that we can actually select up there. So very handy. Fade of ports. As I started on these guys, basically, ah, let me just go back. That's a little more respectable for this time of the day. But you can see if I'm doing my mix, I can just basically work through it. So you can have up to 16 of these uh, working at any one point in time. So the price is, I think, 135, 165 retail, and the rack is about 109, I think. But there's two different racks. So there's this rack, and there's, there's another one that's a little bit larger that allows you to put our other controller, that guy in the window over there, the CMC. Um, oh, sorry, the CC121. You can put that in. Yeah, you can put that guy in the middle and then you can have two rack units on either side. But it works seamlessly with all Cubase aspects, even down to things like um, the control room. 
So this, for instance, this uh, UR28's got six outputs on it, so I can have you know, the drummer going to one, the guitarist going to another, the singer going to another one. I can come into uh, Cubase, go into VST Connections, turn on my control room feature. Be faster if I had a scan computer. Um, go to the outputs and you can see here it's very easy to actually assign it to different outputs. Now that I've done that, I can go into devices, my control room mixer, and basically I can sit here and monitor it. So using, say, the AI knob, the guitarist says, that's a little bit too loud for me, so I turn it down. The singer says, maybe I want some more, so I just point and shoot and move that up. So it's all about making the environment right for them, you know, the performance environment right for them in the studio. But another cool thing is, they might say, right, well, you know, we're actually recording at home and grandma upstairs doesn't allow my uh, Marshall stack. So now we can just basically click on this guy and give them distortion through their own, or you know, different amp simulations through their, their own headphones. And of course, we're only recording the clean sound to tape. So this is all about being able to monitor everything and include your whole entire studio right here, virtually, basically inside of Cubase. So to make it easy, if I want to say, work with them in a, in a performance environment, the guitarist might say to me, mate, I can't, I don't really like the singer. Um, do you reckon you could get rid of the singer in my headphones? So I say no problem, so I can just customize this view, turn on their sends, and now you can see on the guitarist channel, I can drop the vocals down and have more of the guitarists in the sends. So I can do a mix virtually right there in, in Cubase. So they work with every aspect of Cubase. It's not just, I guess, the traditional you know, uh, means of you know, just simply uh, hitting record, play, and, um, and working with uh, just you know, general features, I guess. So yeah, we're pretty excited about them. There's been a massive buzz at this show and um, I think they're going to do very well.